united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Well, greetings. Bless you all. My name is Tene Miller. And um, I'm a missionary. I work uh, in several different nations. And uh, my ministry is called uh, Voice to the Nations, Tanae Miller Ministries. I work in the Arctic of Canada to the Inuit Eskimo, where the average temperature is about 60 degrees below zero. It's very cold up there. But I love the Inuit people, and I'm so thankful that, that God is moving, even in the uttermost parts of the world. Hallelujah. Well, I have some things that God God has put on my heart to share with you today, and so I want to get right to it. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit is truly stirring the embers of revival. I believe that we are getting ready for the greatest move of God that we have ever seen. And so I think it was about uh, maybe uh, four months ago, four or five months ago, I woke up one morning and the Lord spoke to me the word ignite. So I just opened my eyes and suddenly the Lord dropped in my spirit the word ignite. And so I want to speak to you today about the word ignite. And, and I saw in, in the vision, I saw the Lord with a match in his hand and he was ready to strike that match for the fire to well up. And so I want to read to you um, in Isaiah 60. It says, Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness uh, the people but the Lord shall arise upon thee and his glory shall be seen upon thee and the Gentiles shall come to thy light and kings to the brightness of thy rising lift up your eyes round about and see all they gather about uh, together they come to thee thy sons shall come from afar, and they, thy daughters shall be nursed at thy side. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Hallelujah. The Lord said to me very clearly that I am about to ignite my people with the fire of the Holy Spirit, and the Lord will ignite in you. I believe the Lord is about to ignite in you a fresh fire of his power and his glory. Hallelujah. 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 And all of the ingredients are there. And as I've been preparing uh, many people, I believe the Lord is preparing many people for what he's about to do. You know, in order for a move to God, of God to come, he's got to prepare us. And I believe that the Lord um, is preparing his people for a mighty move of God so that we can shine and spark and be the glory of God on this earth in, this, in these dark times. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly. He said, the Lord said that my people will not stay dormant. In other words, my people will not be asleep, but that the Lord is stirring the embers of revival. He is causing many in the body of Christ to, to come awake. You know, I believe that the spirit of the Lord has caused many to be even hidden, that, that our prayers and our, our times that we've cried unto the Lord in, in this dark season, that, that we've been hidden. But God is about to shine the light of his glory upon us, and we're going to ignite um, a move of God by our obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. One of the things the Lord spoke to me was that justice and righteousness is on the rise. And this is, there is, I truly believe that there's about to be a showdown between the forces of evil and the forces of our King of, of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. You know, one of the things as I was preparing um, to go to the Arctic. I was in the Arctic uh, in February uh, to minister among the Inuit people. And then I just got back from England in uh, May, and I'll be heading back to the Arctic in September. In other words, next month. Uh, but one of the things the Lord spoke to me is the word rally the troops. Uh, 
And the Lord is releasing a rally cry for... Uh, for his church to rise up and conquer in this year and in this season and that we will recover what the enemy has stolen. Hallelujah. And that restoration is about to come and that there will be sevenfold paybacks for many in the body of Christ that the enemy has tried to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And I believe that God has a sevenfold payback for you. I've already seen this working in my life in ministry, how the Lord has, has blessed and brought a sevenfold payback uh, in, in several ways. And get ready. I believe he's going to do that for you as well. Hallelujah. You know... Um, the Lord says that there, there's lots of darkness in Isaiah. It says that there's lots of darkness covering the earth, but that there are many people that are going to come to the light of Jesus Christ that is in you. Hallelujah. Uh, so we must let the light of Jesus shine in us. You know, I'm, I remember um, just recently I was, I was really praying, and the Lord showed me a, a vision of a man and he was in the street, and it was, he was, it was as if he was dead with a, a heart attack. And the Lord showed me that the ambulance came, and they were uh, bringing a machine called a defibrillator. And they came, and they, they shocked him back to life. And, and the Lord spoke to me and said that he is about to shock the body of Christ back to life. And that's that word ignite again, that he's about to bring a life to us, and we're going to shine with the light and the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, where there is light, there is revelation. You know, in Ephesians 1.17, um, in fact, that's my prayer for you, is that I pray that the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ will come to you, that, that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened. Hallelujah. But where there is darkness, there is confusion and every evil work. And we've seen that lately. I have a heart for El Paso. I have a heart for Ciudad Juarez. I have a heart for this area because I grew up here in El Paso, Texas. And I know that El Paso is the sun city. It's the city of light. And I believe that the, there's a spiritual connotation with that. You know, um, in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4, verse 6, it says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ, the anointed one and his anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isn't that wonderful? You know, also in 2 Peter 2, 9, it says, you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Hallelujah. A holy nation. A peculiar people who should show forth the praises of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. You know, there's an old chorus. I don't know if some of you remember it. It goes, you are a chosen generation, a holy people, a royal nation, a peculiar people who should show forth the praises of him who has called Called us out of darkness, out of darkness, out of darkness, into his marvelous light, into his marvelous light. Hallelujah. I had to throw that in. <laughs> it's one of my favorite little choruses. And you know, the light of Jesus is about to shine in all of you. I believe God is going to pour out his spirit and his light and his glory is going to manifest in a wonderful way and that the works of darkness we're about to see that every demonic force that has been trying to come against um, this area that the enemy is under our feet and I believe that that ignite is the fire of his spirit and that the light and the glory of the Lord is going to shine and that we're going to see the enemy not only decrease but back off and that he is under our feet amen hallelujah praise the Lord well, you know, um, the Lord reminded me of the prophet Elijah, and I don't have time to go through all of the scriptures, but it is in 1 Kings 18.25. And um, 
the prophet Elijah and the priest of Baal uh, shows the priests of Baal that idols have no power. And you know, I believe in these last days, the enemy has really brought forth an a, a awful spirit of idolatry. You know, people want to worship anything and everything, but we know that no man can come to the Father except through the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's him only that we worship, the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. But you know, those Baal prophets... Uh, they called on the name of Baal from morning to, until noon. And, you know, they were, what had happened was Elijah told, um, I'll go ahead and turn there real quick. He told Ahab that, um, that I have... Ahab, first of all, he, he would conf, uh, accused uh, Elijah of troubling Israel. And Ahab answered and says, I have not troubled Israel, but you and your father's house, in that you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and you have fol followed Balaam, who, which is an idol. Now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal 450 and the prophets of the grove 400 which eat at Jezebel's table. And so Ahab sent all of the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together and Elijah came unto all the people and he said, how long shall you halt between two opinions? For if the Lord be God, follow him, and if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And then said Elijah unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord, but Baal's prophets are 450 men. Now let them therefore give us two bulls and let them choose one bull and lay it on the wood and make an altar and dress it and then call into your gods to bring fire down and to, to, um, to devour the bull. And he says, and I will dress the other bull and lay it on wood and put no fire under it. And you call upon your gods and then I will call upon the name of the Lord. And the God that answers by fire, let him answer. Hallelujah. And you know those, those uh, prophets of Baal. They called out in the name of Baal day and night. They danced around that altar and they shouted and, and Elijah made fun of them and said, look, you got to shout louder. They, I've, perhaps your God is asleep. And they shouted and they began to even cut themselves crying out to their idol. But nothing happened. And then Elijah, it was his turn. And Elijah repaired the altar of, of the Lord and he dug a trench and he poured water uh, on the bull and and then he did it three more times he poured lots of water all over the altar and you know I think it's interesting first of all he repaired the altar and I believe that in this day and time we're going to see many come back to Jesus you know the Bible says that he is married to the backslidden. I believe that now is a time and a season where the Spirit of the Lord is going to call many back to the, to the cross. Amen? That many need to come back to Jesus. There's some of you that may be watching this show that you've been away from God. And I believe that now is a time and a season when God is calling you back. It's time to repair the altars, even in our life, to say, Lord Jesus, I need to come back to you. But anyway, this is a picture. Elijah uh, repaired the altar and then he poured the wa water over the bull and, and all over the wood and everything and then he prayed and he said let it be known today that you are the God of Israel and so these people will know that you are Lord and, um, and that they will come back to the king of kings and so then the fire of the Lord, as he prayed, the fire of the Lord fell and it burned up all of the sacrifice, the wood and the stones, and, and it licked up all of the water that was in the trench. And when all 
Bala, the, the people of Israel saw this. They cried out and they said, the Lord, he is God. And the Lord showed me that there is about to be a showdown. And I know I mentioned that earlier in the spirit where the rain and the power of his spirit is about to come in a mighty way. And that there are people that are in darkness that are going to cry out. And they're going to say that the Lord, he is God, that God is going to show himself mighty in these times. Amen. And in this season, hallelujah. But I believe that the Lord is saying that we must prepare for this move of God. You know, it's very important that, uh, we are in the last days, and I believe we're in the last of the last days, and that we're on the edge of the greatest move of God that we've ever seen. But, you know, we have to prepare. We have to prepare our hearts. We have to prepare. Uh, some of you, I believe that the Lord is releasing um, some fresh commissioning, some fresh assignments by, by the Holy Spirit. And I believe that we've got to prepare for these assignments so that we can be ready for the move of God. Amen? Hallelujah. And I believe that God is going to increase signs and wonders. And that I've already seen this happening in even in my ministry in the Arctic. Um, we've had, uh, when I was there uh, in September and in February, there were um, several healed in the services. There were nine people healed in one of the services. God was pouring out a spirit. There were 30 young people coming to the altar to cry out to the Lord. Quite a few of them came back to Jesus. And I think there was 10 in all that gave their heart to Jesus. There was one little boy that was five years old who had a stomach infection and he had not eaten for two months he could not get food down and um, I looked at him and I said do you believe that Jesus can hear you, heal you and he nodded his little head and as I prayed for him God touched his little body and the next morning the, the mother had called and said for the first time this morning he ate breakfast and lunch and he's about to eat dinner for the first time in two months God healed his body there is a power and a glory about to be poured forth and the word ignite is real God is about to ignite his people and I believe that there are some of you God wants to use you to share the love of Jesus to pray for the sick amen that God is releasing assignments that there is somebody that I believe that you're to go to to share the love of Jesus with some of you God has a call on your life and you've not answered it yet but I believe that the, the Lord is calling you to answer that call and to prepare yourself amen Hallelujah. We need to prepare ourselves for a mighty move of God. You know, all throughout history, we know that uh, God... Uh, spoke to people and they prepared for what God was about to do. We know that John the Baptist, you know, his whole ministry was preparing the way for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Some of you are called to be preparers for the kingdom of God. Um, you know, God sent John, his messenger, before Jesus to prepare the way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Make his path straight. Hallelujah. I believe that we're to prepare the way and make the path straight for the move of God to come. We know that uh, Esther... Hallelujah. That she was preparing to be the wife of the king. She prepared for a year. And then she prepared herself and the, uh, the Jewish people. Uh, she prepared them to fast and pray. Uh, to go so that she could go before the king for such a time as this. Hallelujah. So that she was able to uh, be used of the Lord uh, for her people to be saved. We know that Moses, hallelujah, he had to, pre uh, he was prepared 40 years in the wilderness in order to lead the children of Israel out from Egypt. He prepared 40 years. Hope we don't have to pay pre prepare 40 years, hallelujah. But we need to prepare ourselves for this move of God that is about to come. We know that Noah prepared an ark, hallelujah. But I believe that, uh, that God is going to release instructions from heaven to prepare us for this move of God. You know, the scripture says that, that uh, I will instruct you in the ways that you should go. Hallelujah. 
So we need to prepare ourselves because I believe, even as the scripture says, arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. We need to prepare ourselves for this move of God that is coming. Hallelujah. You know, um, there are instructions that the Spirit of the Lord is about to release to his people, and that... Uh, one of the things that God is doing in this time and in this season is he is releasing anointing for the unlikely. Hallelujah. How many of you might be an unlikely person that God wants to use? I know that I was an unlikely person when Jesus got a hold of me. You know, I, I grew up in El Paso and I didn't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But you know, um, one day when I was uh, in Montgomery where, where I got saved, I cried out to the Lord, God, if you're real, I want to know. And if there's such a thing as a real Christian, show me. I want to know. And you know, within 30 minutes, he answered my prayer. And a man in the restaurant where I worked, he pointed to me and he said, do you know Jesus? My heart started pounding because nobody knew I'd prayed that prayer. And he began to share the love of Jesus with me. And I accepted Jesus in my heart. And I was so excited. I was telling everybody, I met Jesus. I have just accepted Jesus and he's my savior. You know, I believe that God is calling some unlikely people and that he's got a call on people's lives. Some of us are prepared, uh, being prepared to do a mighty work for his glory and for his kingdom. And some of us are being prepared to be a full-time Christian. Hallelujah. But God is preparing his people and he's releasing instructions for this igniting of his spirit that is about to come. You know, I believe some of you are feeling the fire of the Holy Spirit that there's a fire that's being shut up in your bones. There's a fire, there's an igniting. And I prophesy over you today that the igniting of his spirit, that that sense of slumber is, is just going away. But there's an igniting that you've got something to do for the kingdom of God and for his glory. That those of you that have been away from the Lord, that he's igniting the fire of his spirit and that God wants to pour out his spirit even in your life. That it's time to come back to him and to feel the fire fire and the presence of his spirit in your heart and in your life. Jesus is about to shine forth his glory in a mighty way. And you are a chosen people. Hallelujah. He's about to shine forth his glory and his power in you. Hallelujah. You know, I am so thankful for this privilege to get to share with you. And you know, I believe that God is going to do a mighty work in El Paso, in Juarez, Mexico, in this area and in this region. God God is about to pour out his spirit in a mighty way and that we're going to see his glory. Hallelujah. I am so thankful. You know, the scripture says, call unto me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that you know not. Hallelujah. I believe that the spirit of the Lord wants to release a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. I believe that the spirit of the Lord is here today. In fact, you know, there's such a sweet anointing and presence even in this studio. And I pray that you feel the presence of the Lord in this place today, that he wants to ignite in you a fresh fire. Amen. He wants to ignite in you a, a, a freshness, a, a, a refreshing, you know, in Psalms, uh, 92, it says that thou has anointed my head with fresh oil. And, and it says that I believe that God is anointing his people with fresh anointing to do a mighty work for his glory. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. This is not a time to draw back. You know, we're living in some dark times in, uh, in Luke 21, verse 25 and 26, it goes on to talk about men's hearts failing them for fear. And, you know, I think in these dark times, we're seeing a sense that men's hearts are failing them for fear. But I believe that God is about to pour out his spirit in a mighty way and that faith is going to rise up. Amen. Great faith is going to rise up. I want to turn to the book of Romans chapter 13. Hallelujah. Let me go on over here real quick. 
Romans chapter 13, 11 and 12. I'm going to start with 11. It says, and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Hallelujah. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Hallelujah. And let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in, in lying and strife and envying, envying, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh. But you know what? Now is the time to put on the armor of light. Amen. Hallelujah. There's three things I want to say. Let us press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us also contend for the faith. You know, in Jude uh, 3 and 4, it, it says that we must contend for the faith. And then awake. Thou that sleeps, Ephesians 5, 14. Awake thou that sleeps, and Christ shall give you light. Hallelujah. There's an igniting by the Spirit of the Lord. The Lord is releasing an igniting. And I believe this word is for you today, that he wants to ignite in you a fresh power and a fresh glory. Hallelujah. Do you feel his presence? I do. And I want to just pray, Lord, let your presence and your power and your glory ignite in each one that watches this today. Lord, let your power fill each one that Jesus, the Lord, light of your presence will ignite in each one as they see this message and as they as they hear this message today in Jesus name Lord we give you praise and we give you honor we give you glory Jesus that you are about to ignite your people arise shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you hallelujah his glory is about to rise upon you in a mighty way and he is about to answer with righteous deeds for many of us. Hallelujah. Isn't he wonderful? Isn't he a wonderful Jesus? Hallelujah. Thank you so much for listening to this message today. And I praise God that Jesus lives in your heart and that the igniting of his spirit is for you this day, that his presence is there and a refreshing of his spirit is coming upon you even now for his glory. And we give you praise, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.